software. She's getting all the quickies. I am. Yeah. I am. She's I like, am. I don't. Look I'm at how happy brag, she is. But. She's like, I'm not trying to brag about my sex. Like, we talk to a lot of women, yeah. especially in relationships, that are like, I don't even know how to get back to that place. You have to just think about something that you really like, and what is it that you love about that partner that you're with? Mm-hmm. What is it that you loved about them? Mm-hmm. And they have needs too. Mm-hmm. Quit being so selfish. Yeah. Ooh. And I think in our heads we're like, it's got to be this 20 minute thing, and if mm-hmm. I don't have an orgasm, they're not going to be happy, and if I don't do this, it's not going to be this. Just do it. One, two, three. <laughs> Hey, I'm MJ. And I'm Bree. Welcome to the Keeping It Casual podcast. I'm married. I'm a mom, so I get it. And Lord save me because I am dating. We're more than just a sex positive dating and relationship podcast. We want to share the perspectives on every kind of relationship while giving a voice to our listeners. Plus tons of tips to boss up your life and sex life. Your Vegas girls are here for you. Let's do it. Let's do it. Good Hello. Evening. Good evening. Am I allowed to talk yet? Yes. yes. <laughs> We're going to bring you in, though. Okay. Tonight, we welcome the queen of rock in Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. But before we introduce you, big shout to our sponsor, Don't Tell Comedy. They are bringing live comedy to a city near you. The next Las Vegas show is Thursday, June 24th. Get your tickets now at DontTellComedy.com because it will sell out because they've been selling them all out. And we did crush our hosting set last night. So. At the sold out show. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. Amazing. So I'll tell you what is pretty amazing. This bad mamma jamma sitting right next to us. <laughs> yes. Ooh, you guys. She's quite the chameleon. You guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love it. Are, are you ready for some radio royalty? She's been waking up the locals for the past two decades. What? Wow. With her acclaimed morning show, Fox and McKenzie on 97 won the point. Number one for classic rock. <laughs> I love it. I'm, you guys are going to take my job. <laughs> <laughs> no way. And today she's here to show you how she continues to dominate the radio industry with her partner Chris Fox while handling motherhood and maintaining a healthy relationship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're so honored. We're honored <laughs> to have her here today. Please welcome the queen of classic rock in Vegas, Woo! Steph McKenzie. McKenzie. Hey guys. <laughs> I'm honored to be here. Do you know how long this has taken for me to get here? Like Brian had last January before <laughs> oh, pandemic before the madness. world shut down. <laughs> yes. I've but we, discuss- we discussed it a few years ago too at a, yeah. at a friend's memorial. Yes. We were talking about it and it's just scheduling just wasn't linking up no not at all but i am honored to be here with you guys oh. and i love your guys' show oh, i you. love what you guys are doing for women and oh, and baby. all of the talk as far as when it comes to bedroom talk oh, and yeah the love the, the headliner of the show she comes up to us she's been on joe rogan's podcast been on all these things has like all these followers on instagram she comes up to us she's Laura like Bates. you girls tell the truth and i was like why, are, why is big time trying to big time us? I like, think we're big time right now. What's she's going on? Like, should I wear this or this? Aww. Yeah, she's asking us fashion advice. And I was like, I looked at MJ and I was like, what's happening? I love it. Yeah. No, <laughs> you guys are like yeah. so amazing. And I Aww. want you guys to give yourselves more props because you are. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I have to just say to you first, like you and the crew over at Lotus, you are some of the most genuine people I've ever met in the radio industry. Like it's true. Radio can be very competitive. It's like, oh, you play for you play for the Broncos and you play for the Colts. Yeah. I don't know sports, so I'm just hope those well, are you both did say football the Broncos. teams. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> I, could, I could shank you before the interview. But that's okay, <laughs> Raider fan. <laughs> We've got hardcore, hardcore sports fan. But basically very competitive. And like th- with you, you've always just been so, we've never worked at the same station, but in the same area. And we just, you always just show me so much love and respect. I was like, oh my God, Steph McKenzie. It's true. The first she's, she made me feel cool. The first you time know? I met Steph, she's like, she comes up to me. She's like, I just want to say, I don't even know if you remember this. I got to hear this. She goes, I just want to say, you know your voice so well. And they're so dumb for not putting you on air <laughs> over at that station. And I was like, wow. Thank you. I am. Amazing at some of the things I say, <laughs> but it's true for you guys, and, you. and I I don't say it for any other reason but to just always say the way I feel, and it's gotten me in a lot of trouble, but it's okay. I'm okay with everything I've ever said. You know what? You're you're an over 20 year veteran out here in Las Vegas alone. <laughs> not that's not just in radio. That's in Las Vegas radio. How long so, have you been in radio in general? Yeah. Well, can I just give it a general over 30 years? Uh, yeah. Good. Yes. <laughs> Over 30. I keep talking about my radio career, which was like, you know, almost 15. But I'm like, it's been 60 years on the air. <laughs> so I'm going to be rocking a walker. I swear to God I am because I just love it. It's a job you can take. I was always thinking, like,
like if I was sick or I got older or I broke my leg, I can do radio and the same with podcasting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't but, you take know, this microphone from us. When, right. I st- when I started in radio, well, oh God, I probably started in radio before I was even old enough to work because I had my little Fisher Price uh, yes! karaoke <laughs> machine and I'd make um, fake talk shows because I, I, I grew up listening to K-Rock. Way too young to be listening to Loveline, but I did anyway. So I'd be like, <laughs> we're on Loveline right now. Shut the like, door, mom's in the room. <laughs> <laughs> we're on love line right now but seriously i would make my own uh I, I guess i started podcasting before podcasting even existed i wish i still had cassette tapes of my fake ass radio shows yeah. that would be the best so the question right away is what was your first cassette tape that you bought with your own money oh i told you didn't i tell you she was i said you better watch out <laughs> she goes, I did. she's going to turn the interview all around <laughs> she's going, you're right you know what i'm that governor is like mj is going to be like this is not for you to interview no i love it so much no, i just fun. love how it's free form conversation <laughs> so it's good and you're just you're genuinely interested in people you know how to just like give back because some people just sit here like mm-hmm, and ask me next what's next no. you know it's like no, oh, we, anytime like story. anytime mj and i go to a interview we turn it into our show because we're like so we realize we're on your show so but tell me about you <laughs> <laughs> what's going on it's definitely a radio thing. okay so i have to know yeah. what's your cassette? Um, I need to first know. cassette that i ever bought i i don't think i ever bought a cassette i i was always a cd girl the first cd I ever bought. My goodness, I got Paul one. Abdul's Forever Your Girl. Ooh. Ooh. I did have that on tape, and that is a solid one. Mine was Tony, Tony, Tone, the single. It feels good. <laughs> it feels it was rapper a, MJ over here. It was, it was like on repeat the whole way home. My aunt was like, "Get out of my car." I'm done with this cassette. <laughs> yes. All what, right. Okay. What about you? Yes. Mine was Huey Lewis in the News. Oh, oh, you, oh wait, the you know one? why? Because our first concert was at the Minot North Dakota State Fair. My mom took me, my sister, and like five mm-hmm. other kids. God bless her for mm-hmm. that because we have kids and a concert yeah. <laughs> at a concert at outdoor it was awesome and guess who opened up for him juice newton oh my god do you know who that is no playing with the queen of hearts oh, oh my god i didn't know they had a name i just thought, <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I know that did. totally shows my age but she opened no. up for him and she had this long beautiful hair like crystal gale back then oh my god crystal gale that long hair mm-hmm. Dude, that's crazy hair that's ankle length hair and she had it and she'd swing around the the stage when she was singing oh. the songs and we were like oh I want that Playing hair with the that's how what I feel anytime called? I see 70 Playing share with the queen. it's queen of hearts I think yeah Play. anytime I see 70 share I'm like can I please have that hair? Yes. God. I have hair envy of people, especially. Because oh, uh, we have thin blonde hair. Well, All three mine of us. used to be really thick, but I got Corona hair. I got the antibodies. I was oh. asymptomatic, so they had to cut it. It's mm. it you, have you heard of this? This Corona hair thing? I've heard of Corona teeth, where it'll mess up your teeth yeah, in the long run. Yeah, happened yet. Woof. Well, thank God for extensions. <laughs> yes. That's what I wear. <laughs> I love it. I, I will clip mine in any time and feel like <laughs> extra glam. So we have to ask you first, too, because... She She's just not a genuine, amazing person. She's huge in philanthropy. I know there's a lot of causes that you really find dear to your heart yeah. out here. Can you share about one of your favorites? And we can put links to all your faves on our show notes. I have a lot because I have been very blessed being here for over 20 years. Mm-hmm. Coming back after being in high school, mm-hmm. I went to Boulder City High. Mm-hmm. Go Eagles. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, the first one that always comes to mind because I've emceed for them since I came here was the American Cancer Society. Oh. And it's the Breast Cancer Walk. Okay. Oh. And the cool thing that came out of that, among so many other things, is I've walked the journey with men and women who have had breast cancer, ovarian cancer, Everything that has gone on on that, yeah, you yeah. know. Um, but my nanny, when my kids, I adopted both my babies. Yes. And how old are they? She, they're seven and eight. <sighs> they're amazing. And they're si- sassy and spicy and everything else. Um, that you her little Bruce is in there, and Vivian's had a big smile on her face she's the like, whole time. Oh, hi, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, she's like. So I said, you'd be a good hostess to Bruce. She's like, mm-hmm. She's oh, like, yeah. do I need to get Bruce a tablet? Does he have his own? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Should I show him my cool games? And <laughs> total side note on that, from the beginning, you remember the Jungle Book? Yeah. So we would fly when he was little, and mm-hmm. the stewardess would come down, and they were like, oh, your son. And I was like, just keep walking. He's got those snake eyes. Remember yeah. the snake eyes from yeah. the Jungle Book? Yeah. So I was like, he will keep you here. Mm-hmm. you got to keep going, or he'll suck you in. He's going to hypnotize you. <laughs> He's such a charmer. And then little Samantha, she's just like... She's, Vivi 2.0, man. She is like, you can earn my attention. When you can you earn it. my respect, but I'm not going to give it to <laughs> totally. you. Totally. <laughs> and I love that. That goes to kind of what you guys are doing yeah. on, your, on this podcast, yeah. too, as far as being a woman that you know exactly what it is. It mm-hmm. gives me grayer hair, yes. probably, than what I want sooner in life. <laughs> but oh, yeah. I love that I'm teaching her that. Oh, yeah. But great. my nanny had come to 
me. We were at a remote. We do live on location stuff, and mm-hmm. she was going through chemo, oh, and oh she God. was wrapped up. She was one of two other wonderful women I've met on this journey, and she said, you always make us smile when we're having chemo. Mm. We listen to the point, and that just <sighs> tore me up, right, because you don't really think that. I would have cried. Mm. It was Well, and it was hard because we yeah. were live on location. You're yeah, like, you okay. could have. I would have just been like, give and, me a minute. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then she came back after she got her wraps off, and she was like, oh, my gosh, I've been listening to your story, and I want to be your nanny. I just love kids. Oh, oh my God. So, wow, that's how you met her? And she has become my adoptive mom and my kids' nana and grandpa. And That's amazing. Oh, I love and, it. And then the, the other one is the walk with the heart of a child because we have lost some kiddos along the way. <sighs> and that's really tough. And oh I've gone God. to the hospitals with the kids. And, yeah. you know, and through the pandemic, I've gotten a lot newer ones that yeah. have come up and ones that we've really had to help and mm-hmm. just... It, everything you know we went through the shooting here in las vegas yeah. we've gone through the pandemic i was on the air the night that the towers in new york city and that was oh tough so gosh. the things that happen worldwide yeah. always affect right where we are and we yeah. live here yeah and so to be able to touch all of the nonprofits here in town they work together yeah. has been the best thing ever so that's oh, that sounds like it. what it kind of inspires you to like feel like what can i do and just like reaching out to an organization mm-hmm. and helping them there's always something i always Really? I get people ask me that question all the time, mm-hmm. you know, about what they can do. We come yeah. to Vegas and the neighbors don't talk to me. It's so hot or it's this. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Let me tell you. Let me direct you where to go. Yeah. There's what such are you a community into? community in this city. And I don't think people realize that. And nobody outside of Las Vegas realizes what a community we have here. It's amazing here. It it's, is. There's so much that we do and people want to help each other. Mm-hmm. And, and I love how they collaborate together. Yeah. That's been really cool to yeah. watch that over the years come together. Then. So you mentioned you. You adopted, were you a foster parent before you adopted your children or did you go straight into the adoption? We went straight into the adoption okay. and um, I've told this story, pretty amazing. So I am a Caucasian woman and we go into this and they. it's very important and the reason I bring that up is because we were older, my ex and I were mm-hmm. older and bringing a, a child into your family, if you're going to bring anyone other than your race or mm-hmm. ethnicity, you need to let them experience that. And I didn't know that we could do that because we were older. I didn't think I had the patience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was told that we were never going to be able to adopt. Oh, because no. Because there weren't white children in America. Whoa. God, you don't even realize until you get in that. And then we felt so, like, like racist. And people helped us along that path. And I'm like, we're not trying to be racist. We're trying to be real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, we started the process in August. And in November, we got the call. And my baby girl came. <gasps> oh. Oh. But they said it would never happen. That's so insane. That is insane. Yep. And then my son is Italian. And he's very dark, and everyone's like, oh, that's oh, so he's nice. Little... He has beautiful olive skin. He's going to have problems I know. with all the ladies. And the only reason I bring that up is because it's part of the adoption story that I think needs to be told, and people don't want to be real about their stories, mm-hmm. right? We didn't just go, oh, we're going to adopt. I couldn't foster because I can't. I, I love. Mm-hmm. One of my friend's mom said, you know what? People collect things when they go on vacation, right? Like snow globes mm-hmm. or shot glasses. She goes, but you collect people and you never let them go. Aww. And I couldn't do that. Oh, I had friends. She was fostering animals, and it. it was like, do you want to? Fo-? I was like, no, they're never, they're never leaving. I, I, I have to I commit now. I couldn't foster. I'm, I'm a, I'm a dog girl. I have two dogs. I love my dogs. I love MJ's dog over there. Um, <laughs> it's a horse. I, but I, is. she <laughs> is. Um, she's big, floppy. She's a sweet baby girl, though. But anyways, sometimes I could not foster animals because giving them back I raised that thing it's mine I know technically my husky is not my husky it's my brother's dog but yeah he moved to Chicago and she's mine now and I have tons of friends that do it and God bless them and yeah. you know we had people that helped us on the journey but yeah. being told you're never going to be able to adopt that's was, fucked up was so tough and we talked about that before we even cracked the mics about like people just putting these boundaries on you and just yeah. saying like I don't think anybody has the right to say you can't do this or you and especially when you have so much passion in mm-hmm. your heart you want that and it comes from a place of love there's no reason well, it I shouldn't think that be that's a big theme of what's going on right the reason I say that is because we have you know everyone hating on everyone or angry mm-hmm. that they're not doing this I mean let's be real about it right yeah politics yeah, yeah. corona everything else that's going on yeah you're going to always believe what you believe, but mm-hmm. how are you going to project it and how are you going to live your life nice around other people? Thank that you. Are how the are same? you going to respect other people? It's just so much disrespect for each other in yeah. this world yes. right now. And it's like, like nobody believes everything that somebody else believes in because what are you going to learn from somebody if you're exactly mirrored to them? 
Ugh. Nothing. Exactly. No. What and does Rachel Hollis say? You guys know who she is. I love her. Yes, I've read her books. Oh my gosh, I yeah, love her. her. You know, and and people have said this over and yeah. over. She's you know not fixing anything that's broke. She's just elaborating on what we know and really mm-hmm. bringing it up to the forefront. Yeah. But if you are the smartest person in the room, if you are bashing on people, then shame on you. Then you're in the wrong yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. You can either agree to disagree, or you can just be like, you know, I respect you have that opinion, but you just go around like my opinion's the only one, and that's that's when it gets like, all right, well then I don't want to hang out with you because yeah. nobody wants to deal with that. There's so many people out there like that right now, and it just like blows my mind. I'm like, okay, but no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. like, that's just all I can say. It's just like, it was nah. So nice yeah. meeting you. I have to go get a cocktail. Yeah, yeah. Hey. I'm sorry. I'm gonna go somewhere else. Like, I went on a date with this guy who like went straight into politics. It was a Facetime date. It wasn't a real date. A, and he just went straight into politics, and Ew. he was just like, I, I didn't bring it up. He just like started imploding into him, and I was like, if I believed what he believed or not, it was just so like, I don't Why? care. Yeah, let me know who you are first. Yeah. So I have to share the funniest story. You bring up dating thing. Yeah. We went to Newport. My boyfriend and I went to Newport uh-huh. and we were sitting at the tables outside because they do the outside dining. Yeah. And there was a first date behind us. Oh, do you and love it, to listen to it? You guys, it took everything for me not to jump in and be like the mediator and be like, let's talk about what you just said. <laughs> I mean, it, it took, because Microphone in the back pocket. Oh, guys. you guys, he was just like, so tell me about you. Like, so if I'm a guy that wants to be with you forever, like, what happened to your last relationship so I don't do that? How many people like, have you slept with? That uh, is such a right condescending the- way of asking that. There is a way to ask, like, so why are you, see- like, what happened in your last breakup, blah, 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 whatever. I, I was just straight up be like, okay, so how long have you been single? Because mm-hmm. if they're recently single, most likely they're not ready for... A yeah. relationship. Yeah, they might be ready for the bedroom. Yeah, not a relationship. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm just like, okay. So how long have you been single? Okay, three months. Ugh, how long yeah. was that relationship? Whole phase. Yeah, yeah. How long yeah. was that? But yeah. like, that's also dependent upon how long that relationship was. It was like a month long relationship, True. and you know. But, but I if, just felt bad yeah. for this girl. Oh yeah. God. I mean, we. He was I, like da, 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 and he kept. Ch-ch-. I'm like, can you let the girl? I wanted to be like, can you let her answer a question? Terrible. <laughs> the worst. You're the worst. <laughs> There's so many men out there who just don't respect women who talk so well, and, they then, just... and then this was the cheesiest line oh my god i can't believe i remember all this she comes back from the bathroom and he was like oh i'm sorry the seat is here for the most beautiful girl that's here today. Like, oh it's you and i was like ew i ew. hate this ew. guy all of our faces god. said ew we're just like Mm-mm. she's probably like mm. oh i hate Don't. this guy no, okay and that's good advice we have some male listeners uh we say some but like they write us they're rating us on itunes thank you and- to our male listeners for real <laughs> like y'all just i don't understand why you like us but, but thank you but the perspective is very interesting mm-hmm. especially when we get perspectives yeah. from dudes you know my brother-in-law is dating he gives us some good tea on from his end but they need to know and then that's i call not okay and then i call her brother-in-law out and i'm like excuse me why did you do that though yeah. <laughs> well and at what point do you get into it and this would be yeah. something great for you to share yeah. with everyone why can't you just sit down and have a conversation like we're having now why is it so weird when you get into a situation that's uh, not what i'm about i want to know genuine like like genuinely get to know people but that's what i'm saying we're sitting yeah. here talking yeah. like whatever it is yeah. that we're gonna talk about mm-hmm. why can't you just sit down and be like oh i like this place or like mm-hmm. keep it like real if i'm on a date yeah. with somebody and we're not having a genuine conversation yeah. like this there will not be another it just date. sounds no. like he's spouting off his yeah, list of questions out, like weird shit and i mean it's okay to talk about previous relationships and stuff if that's all we were talking about then that's a problem but if i'm like hey just so you know i was in a very toxic situation so i might be a little kooky sometimes yeah. but we're all weird and yeah, we should be weird exactly yeah. that's what i'm saying if you're not real Mm-mm. then what kind of person are you because then, then you're spending three months pretending to be somebody else the next three months revealing your true selves and then the next three months deciding if you like each other and then you've just wasted an entire fucking year of your life almost i'll tell you i am single oh. after a divorce and i dated and then i found an amazing boyfriend mm-hmm but at 47 years of age, dating is weird when you have babies. Yeah. At that time, unfortunately, can we talk about what happened to my ex? Oh, okay? of course. Yeah. yeah. So my ex, God bless him, rest his soul. Uh, he passed away of Corona at 45. Mm, so I'm that's so been hard this year. I did not know that. I didn't you didn't? <gasps> oh, yeah. Steph, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Oh it's God. okay. We celebrate life. So so prior to him being sick, because he was sick for a very long mm-hmm. time. He was on the vent when it first happened. Oh, jeez. So we were dating, and of course, it's always that trials and tribulations. How yeah. you know he didn't like 
that I had a I will say he probably died of a broken heart because it was wasn't a bad divorce but it was just a divorce that we were the best of friends yeah mm-hmm. but no intimacy okay. so the sex died yeah and I I'm a very sexual person me too yes very sexual there's <laughs> yes. no shame in my game let's talk about it okay don't be, one let's time talk about total it. side note I don't want to bring you down I didn't know you guys oh. didn't know that I'm sorry oh I no it's fine I that. thought you were uh, referring to the divorce we we are living life because I am a girl that the glass is half full and will celebrate the life you don't yeah. know how much time Absolutely. you're gonna get with someone yeah and my kids celebrate his life and Aww. we talk about him and they talk about him with my boyfriend and good. my boyfriend is their bonus dad and it's awesome we have a good time yeah but the reason I had brought that up is that it doesn't matter who you date if you're single if you're not single how old you are what's going on you got to have some common denominator there and don't be afraid of what it is that your common denominator yeah, might yeah. be right be okay with that but there's gonna be some bumps in the road the, going back to the whole mirror thing like you don't want to date somebody exactly like you what are you gonna learn from that person no no it's just gonna get boring quick and I know this is weird people will be like oh she has a daddy thing so he's older than me. he's almost 10 years older than oh, me. I love older men oh me too <laughs> I'm a daddy girl I love daddies I've always loved daddies well, I have that guy, that young one pushing see, me around you know, it's funny. <laughs> My parents are 10 years apart, and my grandparents were about 10 years apart from each other, too. So all I've ever seen is an older man. So that's my point of this. Yeah. So women will go to what, whatever, right? Yeah, so what we see. My boyfriend reminds me so much of my stepdad, who was an amazing man in my yeah. life. And that's how my, my father is. My father is a very, I mean, MJ's met my dad. He's yeah. a very loving, caring family man. Oh, he's yeah. so sweet. Yeah. He's the best. And my boyfriend's very old-fashioned, mm-hmm. which is weird for some people on the outside that have gotten to know him, because I was with my ex for so long. Mm-hmm. And even though he was a year younger than me, he was an old soul. Yeah. Mm. So that was the daddy yeah. thing that I love. Yeah. Um, and then this relationship, he's amazing, but he's old fashioned. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. But we are caught up in I am woman, hear me roar. Yeah. And so people are like, he controls you or he's this. or he's... No, he doesn't. Mm. He doesn't do any of that. He's amazing. And we do it together. Well, sometimes people don't get the dynamic. You know, you are so like full of energy and light and just bubbly and social. And, you know, you have that magnetic personality and you may have a man that's more reserved. He's very sweet. I got to meet him and he's just very cool and laid back, you know? So well, you and Chris have completely different dynamics. You're, you're yeah. out, very outgoing and whatever. And Chris, and he's a you, butthead. You got to <laughs> get to, no, I adore Chris. He's, yeah. he's like my brother, but Chris is like, you, you got to get to know him, but he's not going to go up and just chat with anybody. Mm-mm. He's not. He's, no. He will respect you. Yeah. I think that through all of this and all the talks that you guys will continue mm-hmm. to have and what you've had is the one thing I've learned if I can stress and help anyone in life is really just be your authentic self. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because we, it's taken me a long time. I've always not cared yeah. and been me and had different hairstyles and different clothes. How and dare yeah, I you? Am. I know. Chameleon. You. Um, <laughs> your pictures but, don't look the same. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> but now I'm like totally like, this is who I am. Mm-hmm. Like it's 100% and I love this man. And, mm-hmm. and by the way, another relationship thing, we are never getting married. Oh. We do okay. have a nice ring okay so you um you you just said i had my marriage he, and he had a marriage okay and n- you're just happy being with each other was that fireworks or God? yeah it, like it, it happens <laughs> it like, happens around it's here. almost fourth of july guys. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah um so it's something that you know been there done that got yeah. two trophies for it went mm-hmm. through a death which you know you don't yeah. think about it's gonna happen and and i'm living life and having a great time that's and, amazing and i and i can imagine for me it was also like i didn't need a ring on my finger to make me feel more committed to him this Why? was it's and that, always a are, more important to somebody and if it's not that important to you but it is important to your partner then go for it yeah, exactly. unless you have your own reasons but I mean but if you guys can agree to like this doesn't make it anymore and it's funny how society commitment. is well what is that ring because it's a nice rock I'm gonna I'm, can I brag you're like it's yeah. mine can you it's, it's, it, yeah. my it's eye my can I see when you twist this way <laughs> I know it's, and I'm like we're committed yeah it's a commitment we're together ring. we're we love each other and we're having fun in life is what I always say yeah. to people. One of my biggest things is because like my, my boss, for example, he and I have this conversation. He said, whatever you do when you get married, make sure you get a prenup. And I said, I don't make prenup money. He goes, oh, he goes, it stick with me. <laughs> well, he just <laughs> But the guy might. <laughs> well, and he just kind of said it like, well, Nevada is 
the type of state where it's 50 50 he goes so if you're making a lot more it doesn't matter if you're not making quote unquote prenup money if you're making more but i will tell you going through divorces Mm -hmm. mine was we did ours which is so i think it's hilarious and funny i mean how how, how out of control it can get or well because my boyfriend's is out of control and when you talk about 50 50 they were together for almost 30 years yeah there it is they have adult kids that's that that's that 50 50 thing there's a lot going on there yeah my boss was just like protect yourself if you get married he goes but if you just find a life partner and you guys are cool not being married do that yes i was like thank you yes and i'll tell you going through everything i've gone through this last year with the death and and everything else make sure you have a living will people oh god yes and have assets and i don't care if you only have a little 401 oh i don't have anything big you still have a 401k you still have something and if you have life insurance you have a car right yeah yeah you have a house or an apartment you might have a credit card what happens to all that? You're so right. No, I have everything set up to where if something happens to me tomorrow that I, I don't have a partner right now. So my brother is the one who will be getting and taking care of everything. But I just have everything set up. Like, here you go, dude. Here's all your instructions. Enjoy. Good Pay off college you. for yourself. You should. I need to have a talk with Chris. So mentioning that you are in a relationship, how long have you guys been together now? It'll be three years. I don't know. Oh, yeah. People are like, you guys are like still in the honeymoon phase. And we're like, we hope we are forever. We've been there, done that. And it we know... Yeah. Yo, three you years is not like it's it's honeymoon, but it's also like it's real time. It's like yeah. we've been through it, and we know. I know what and annoys because, me. And because you guys have, <laughs> you know, both been in marriages where the intimacy has been lost, you you want to keep dating. Basically. I always tell people, be careful what you ask for because, whoo. Mm. Oh, and it now is I was like, hot and mm. I love it. <laughs> we did have a friend who she went through a marriage, and she's like, we were best friends, you know. And it, the intimacy me. Now she's in a relationship where the like sex is through the roof; it's off the charts. Like it's a lot. She's like, sometimes I'm worn out, you know. Like yeah. She, she said the same thing. Be careful. So there are going to be those ebbs and flows in relationship. And if you feel like it's a deal breaker for you, or you're like, my life is not thriving like this, yeah. you know, maybe somebody else is like, I'm cooler with a less intimate relationship, and I'd yeah. rather have more of this more of the friendship like yeah. maybe some of these men that they were dating to or married to but yeah. you have to pick what's what's going to be your deal breaker right yeah and when to say like i kind of need more well I, and i was the one that asked for the divorce so i yeah. think that that was and that's tough for a woman to do yeah. if you take a poll right now everyone listening you guys yeah. ask people who asked for the divorce it was either a there was a cheating going on male mm-hmm. or female mm-hmm. um or the man asked for it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. interesting i think because a woman would feel guilty to be like I want more sex and attention from my husband is that wrong and that feels wrong right it feels wrong to and be men like, think oh. that they can do that right they think they can solve that problem you know what's interesting about all this we're saying this is like I, I obviously can't speak from a marriage standpoint I can only speak from relationships and stuff and like I don't break up with people see the first time I ever broke up with somebody was just my last partner see isn't that interesting and right it, there and it was a uh, situation where there wasn't a lot of fighting for me there wasn't a lot of sexual tension there was just a lot of things that weren't adding up for me that I need in a relationship a lot of laziness I guess is a really good mm-hmm. way of that's a great way yeah. to say something in, yeah. yeah I was talking about this today with my co-workers I said you know he's probably one of the first people I've ever broken up with every other man I have fought for yeah. no matter how mm-hmm. bad it was yeah. I have fought for them and because we're nurturers yeah and and my co-worker goes I'll do this thing where I tell the guy to break up with me so I feel clean and I was like Italian divorce just like annoy them to death so they break up with you I have convinced men to break up with me because I still wanted to have this clean record but I've come to a point in my life now where it's like I don't fucking care I want what I want and if you're not giving it to me get the fuck out and don't you wish we would have had that at 16 what you just said is what I have I've gained in the past four years more than I've ever had. I've had it, but I've done that too. You're going to hold on to the end. You're going to nurture it. You're going to make it work. And that's a a sexual relationship, a friend relationship, whatever it is, right? But now I'm like, no. That's good advice because I think a lot of times when we start things and then somehow they come to an end we feel like a failure and that we whole do. that whole thing is like the failure the judgment it's like no and when you can get over yourself and just be like i moved on because things were different i needed different yeah. things in my life and it's okay right? and i think we don't take those feelings because i did feel like a failure when i got a divorce oh. and i wasn't one that asked for it i felt like a huge failure you didn't make it work my kids were four and five i mean it was hard yeah and that's S- common we've heard that yeah. with, you know like you can only imagine but it's made you even so much stronger and powerful and you sound like you're in a situation where you found like there's always something going to be a little more balanced one of the ways i look at it now because i was very negative
negative about stuff like, oh God, no, like none of my relationships have lasted. I'm such a failure, but no, I'm not a failure. Just because it was, you know, a year of this relationship, a few years of that relationship. I'm not a failure because I couldn't make a three-year relationship last. Look what I did for three years. But it's taken you time to get there. And yeah. I sure. think that if we give more advice and expand on that, yeah. is that you have to take those feelings. Like I went into some therapy. Yes. And I, and I, and I've been in therapy before, but I love therapy. Yeah. Everybody should be in therapy. Yeah. I am. <laughs> Let's cheers, cheers to therapy. Cheers to therapy. To therapy yes. I love therapy. And this is, this is, cur- this is therapy right here. Oh, this is I like our it. weekly. I love therapy. But I think that the two things, when we read a book, you turn the page. Yeah. We don't know how to turn the page, Bob Seger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For real. No, it's <laughs> we don't, thing. we don't know how to change the page because we don't want to hurt someone's feelings. We don't want to... But guess what? That's not your problem to worry about what other person's feelings are going to be. Your problem yeah. is to be what you have to do and of course yeah. don't walk around being a fucking asshole right and no actively God. hurting somebody's feelings no and i think that is a big part of yeah. the show when we talk about comes to the relationships you get in the long term you get in the marriages like it's not just gonna happen you have to be intentional about things you have to be intentional about making your relationship work you have to be intentional about getting the sex when you got the kids and all the other distractions of life like and people think that's kind of embarrassing like oh we haven't had sex so we're not going to talk about it and i'm not going to tell anybody about i'm just going to think it's only me you know like we chris and i miss a saturday sometimes it's just not happening that week or the next week i mean it can pile up and all of a sudden i'm like it's been two weeks three weeks but i think you just hit it right there because we talk about this on fox mckenzie all the time yeah Mm -hmm. about relationships relationships and sex you know the thing is is that no one wants to be honest about it because they can't like I need quickies yeah I have a seven (sighs) and an eight year old and that's what I get right now. I'm like over that, here like quickies. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> everyone you know everyone thinks it. that they need this long, drawn out, intimate oh thing. I've they so need this. this before. I love oh, it. Yeah. I, I just I'm like, listen, sometimes that's great. I'm not yeah. saying. Sometimes you just need to get it in. I am a sexual person. I need sex. Okay. Yeah. And after studies and after talking to people, and by the way, I did a broadcast in a nudist colony once for another. Yes. Yeah, awesome. you did. Yeah, she did. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> is communication of like, listen, OK, we need this like but yeah. everyone thinks it's like this 20 minute thing you know why it takes longer in sex and women get offended by it there's what six thousand nerve endings in our yeah. vagina yeah. it takes a long time for the stimulation yeah, yeah. we mm-hmm. had a doctor tell us um once why are you having problems in your marriage why are you not having sex with your husband because usually it's the woman because she doesn't you know she can't have an orgasm to be or she's embarrassed or she won't talk about it yeah and the doctor said sometimes you just have to have sex and, and you know what you can't have an orgasm every time you have to have sex a man needs sex this is okay. So does a woman. Yes. yes. Fuck yeah, we do. But I'm saying for women's yeah. point, especially as you get older and you have kids. Yes. A quickie is a quickie. You get it. Mm-hmm. This is, and, and that that's exactly, I think sometimes we're like, okay, how do I psych myself up to get, the, I just did dishes, I just cleaned the house, the kids have been mentally terrorizing me all day, and now I need a quickie. Like, what is a good way that you slip into that, let me get some mindset yeah. with all that distraction going in. You're what like, I've is, worked, I'm cleaned. Well, do you ever, <laughs> do you ever shut the door? Do you and Chris ever shut the door? And, and or is, is for you in your mind, you need a long I do, but also it's more pain. like, and shut the door, it's more like I'm in the shower and he comes in to me. I'm like, get in the fucking shower, get out. You know, it's yeah. just like it's it's more or a New like, Year's Eve party when Auntie Bree can watch the kids for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's that it's. Is awesome. But you're right. Just need to shut the door. That's what the tablets are for. You know, they're at an age where they can be. Yeah. Are you a sexual person? Fuck yes. Of course. And I'm, so then why not just have it? I think we're so ingrained in this routine. The kids are like, they're just so needy. They're always bugging or they're like knocking no, on the door. Can't, she like, can't take a second to like talk to me on the phone to like be like, okay, we got to prep an episode in. The, without hearing like mommy look and i'm like do i gotta go my girlfriend yeah. gave me the best thing you have to get over that where they're like yeah. mom yeah mom we'll be out in a minute yeah yeah keep going. <laughs> and guess what i think that when you have kids you know that you keep yeah going. let's go let's you know yeah. let's do this mm-hmm. and it's the mom guilt of like you just have to be so present for them no there and is I, no mom guilt yeah. we got to get you over that you don't have to be super present all the time. But she's just turned it up a notch. I'm like, fuck yeah. Steph was like, just get, get it, it okay? Five minutes. You can okay, do this. let's break it down. Stop it. My, <laughs> my ex died of oh, Corona. I have God. two kids that are grieving. I have a boyfriend that needs sex all the time. I work all the time.
time and mama needs sex all the time too. Guess what? I'm getting sex. <laughs> Get my quickies. There's no guilt. I'm There's getting... no guilt. You oh, just have to have it. Oh my God. I love it. I, I'm feeling so empowered and I want yes. all of that. I, I've got no excuses who's, anymore. What kind of mommy guilt do you, who's going to, is the, the mom angel coming down from the heavens that's going <sighs> to tell you, I can't believe you just had sex. Your kids <laughs> needed you for five minutes and you were with them all day. What are they going to punish you? I've snuck off longer to masturbate. Okay. Yeah, yeah, hello. See? <laughs> Come you on. Know. But yeah, I think it's like, I'm so glad you're saying this because so many women get in their heads about like, we need a, a official date night. So that was actually answered a question of like, how do you guys really prioritize that one-on-one time with everything going on? She even does philanthropy, guys. She doesn't have time. <laughs> She's got the time to fucking do She's it all. Like, okay, no excuses. Um, we're taking a shower. Get it in real quick. Yeah. yeah. My sister will call it so funny and I'll be like, um, I'm going to have to call you back. <laughs> And, my, and here's another funny yeah. thing. I don't know. Do you guys name your private? Um, one time I called it Cher, but but it's not like a thing forever. No. My mm. sister has always named her vagina Sally, mm. and so it's this thing. I'm like Sally is getting taken care of, and I will call you back. <laughs> so- <laughs> I call my period Esmeralda. That's hilarious. I'll be like Esmeralda's here this month. Like is here for the week. So just talk to me later. Yeah, oh, we'll be done with that later. I fucking love that. Okay, so being that May is masturbation month. Ooh, how I was uh, born May 31st. Just gonna throw that out. Just there. saying. Oh, this birthday's head birthday celebration. Yes. So is this your birthday podcast? Yes. What? Yes. I love oh it. God. We're so excited. I love to that have you're you a here. Gemini and not a Taurus. Yeah, me just too. Just saying. But, <laughs> yeah, me um, too. <laughs> my sister is a Taurus, and I'm dating a Taurus. So I got a male Taurus and a female. Taurus. My mom's a Taurus. They're difficult. Woo! <laughs> stubborn ass bitch. Oh, stubborn. <laughs> yes. Stubborn, but fucking solid, right? Okay, right. give me the masturbation question. <laughs> Do you think prioritizing it is, is is an important part of self-love? I will say that <laughs> I used to masturbate a lot. Oh, I masturbate uh-huh. all the time. I yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one one product that I love the most, we had her on our show years ago, but I get, I sent it to all my friends is the Womanizer. Have you guys tried <gasps> I it? I knew she was um, going to say the Womanizer, uh, yes. Yes, yes. We, <laughs> yes. we send vibrators to people monthly. We're actually giving away a vibrator in this episode. All right, who's ready for the monthly Keeping It Casual swag giveaway? I know I am. And it is Masturbation Month, the month of May. Come on, give it up. Give so it up. you know, for me. we are giving you <laughs> something to masturbate with. And if you listen to our Patreon, something to masturbate along to. Oh, hell yeah. Talk about a sexy story to tell in the dark is back this month. Ooh. And uh, looked at our reviews on Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much for rating and reviewing. That's how you get entered into the giveaways every month. And you can also join the Patreon at the $5 level and up to be entered to win as well all right are you ready for this month's winner i'm ready hit me hit me this is an apple podcast review five star omg everything i wanted and more exclamation point exclamation point each time I listen, I get more and more insightful information. MJ has a voice that just screams sexy and Brie! Oh. Three exclamation points. There is nothing I could say that could top how outstanding her experiences and man, is she funny. Seriously though, they have a topic for anything I need and exactly when I need it. When it comes to single life and now with my relationship, even though I am not married yet, I can still identify with these topics. Thanks ladies for always being there when I need you the most. KIC forever heart. Wow. And that was from Happy Girl. Please send us an email to feedback at keepingacasualpodcast.com, and we're going to send you a vibrator. And now, back to the show. If, if it's a very, very popular, expensive sex toy, it's probably been in or around my vagina. I love it. <laughs> See, I love this. This is amazing. But yes, it, we've always said, even with Brie, like when you're not having sex or when you're single and dating, like it is important to keep you feeling sexual or like say somebody's trying, they're just struggling to get to that quickie. Get in touch with yourself. Yeah, I, a little I, bit. Would, I would say that it's important and you go through phases in your life, mm-hmm. right? At one point, it was something that I relied on all the time. I don't need it. I don't yeah, one of crave things, it, have to get it. One of the things I noticed as a, as a single girl <laughs> yes. with uh, with masturbation or even just, you know, with the lulls in relationships, masturbation brings out your pheromones and it gets guys to be like, uh-huh. what's up? If I'm going out and I know I'm going to be out, I 
always masturbate beforehand. And, Confidence and boost. I think. How mu- how often MJ's been out with me? How often do guys just come up to me and they're like, "Hey, what's up?" Yeah, they attack you a lot. And they do. And she just you're so right. When you're single and you're with your girls and you're going out, that always seems to be a topic. Or you got to do this because we have we have a girl group that we travel and we've been together yes. for years. And That's two of amazing. them are single, and they both got the womanizer from mm-hmm. me. Fuck yeah! But I love. I'm not saying I'm against it or that you shouldn't do it. It's yeah. just that I'm at a different place in my life she's where getting all the quickies i am, ah. I am. she's I like am. i don't look not at how happy brag, she is but. she's like i'm not trying to brag about my sex like well i'm gonna <laughs> brag and just say the last time i had sex was with two people so oh <laughs> this girl <laughs> was it two men or was it a woman as well uh it was a couple yes oh, oh. so you're the unicorn no you know what's funny is we they're um they're polyamorous couple good friends of mine and i kept saying like the unicorn and they were like you're not our unicorn and I'm like, thank you. Aww. Thank you. You're more so, than that, right? Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. more than that. Ooh. She's a very good friend of mine and has been for years. And just, you know, sometimes three ways happen. It's just there. And it's why not? There. Especially with a couple with so, I love that they just have no boundaries. They, and they're just so open. That kind of relationship is so foreign to and me. And he you know? is one of the best lays I've ever had in my life because he is the type of man who wants to know a woman's body and how to make a woman come in many, many, many different ways. Mm. Oh, that's amazing. And I was just like, I didn't even know that existed there. <laughs> See, and I think that that's another part of it is that yeah. there's so many things to explore, right? And There is. And when you get with someone that's amazing, no matter who your partner mm-hmm. is, no matter if you're gay, lesbian, mm-hmm. heterosexual, whatever it is, there's different things that can happen. Yeah. But we shut down when we get into a one-on-one relationship because we're scared to talk about it. Yeah. I think so. We as women still don't know every button that we can push. And you need to find True. a partner that's willing to push those buttons and say, does that work for you? Is that good for you? Yeah. Because honestly, as women, we can only get so far inside ourselves. Like, I hate to say it that no, way, but, but it's like... It's true. Like, there's only so much we can touch. And your erogenous zones. Am I saying that right? Erogenous Erogen- zones. Erogenous zones. Sounded awesome. Sounded like <laughs> things I would say on the radio. I love erogenous. it. Erogenous. We're just going to erogenous out. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, even then, like, I love having my inner... Like, just, just as sim- something as simple as, like, I like having my thighs kissed. Ooh, that is very yeah. sexy to me. I would do that to... He loves that. Well, I can't do that to myself. Self. And I don't think that we have explored because we were taught one way, whatever your first sexual experience was, oh, whether it was good or bad and whether yeah. you want to overcome that. Yeah. No pun intended. Again, yes. <laughs> I got them all day. Hey, yes. um, you have to be willing to explore. It, and you do. And like these women who are like, well, I've never had an orgasm and my partner like just wants to get off. I'm like, hey, then you need to find a new partner or a womanizer. Oh, um, or a woman, I'm a a womanizer. Or and they have a little mini we'll lipstick. A vibrator. Not yeah. that I've sent a thousand of those out to all my friends. <laughs> That's what we want to do. We want to spread like masturbate because we feel like it's the gateway to sex and quickies and consistency and just feeling sexual. Because you do reminding have to yourself. know your, like you might not know your whole body, but you do have to know your your yeah. ple- your main pleasure centers before you could be like, okay, make me come to a guy. Yeah, you can't do that. I think like you can be insecure about a lot of things, but if you're in touch with your sexuality, like that is a source of confidence and power. Mm-hmm. And once you can tap into that I mean you feel unstoppable sometimes you look at somebody you're like where'd she get all that from yeah. you know yeah. it's like bitch knows herself and she's confident yeah and that's and people can see that they can and smell it they can men, feel it. It, it I can only say this as a straight woman men can tell when you are a confident woman versus when you're a woman pretending to be confident yeah, yeah very Ugh. well said come into this recently where like I have a guy friend and every time he and I go out I get hit on constantly and he just thinks it's hilarious so he went and told another one of his girlfriends about it and she was like well how go when we go out I don't get hit on like that and he was like can you teach her how to be confident and I was like no no I can't I was you like can't I teach can teach that I can teach her when you enter a room do it slowly mm-hmm. when you want to talk to somebody don't rush the conversation I can teach you that but I can't teach you how to love yourself you gotta yeah. find that within yeah, yeah absolutely we have some fun rapid fires to Ooh. hit you with at the end she's got things to handle and I gotta stuff, go have so. a quickie <laughs> yeah she has, midnight. she got quickies so let's say <laughs> That's my challenge. Masturbation month is over. I'm on it. All right. I'm coming at you with a new attitude. <laughs> June is quickie month for MJ. Yeah, I love it. This month, it was 10 times this week. 
<laughs> Good. I want Big you to. Goals. I want you. <laughs> Chris, I, I think June should be quickie month for the two of you. I don't know. I need a sex challenge. Um, yeah, that's a sex challenge that, for couples out that there. That is a good sex challenge. And here's the other thing that goes along with that is sometimes you need lube and it's not embarrassing. Oh. Don't be embarrassed. Oh, we're big we fans of lube. Love yes. lube. Shout out to System Joe. When I was telling her about my three way, she's like, "Tell me about all the lubes," and I was like, "Oh, I didn't need any this time." <laughs> sometimes you don't, and sometimes you do, and it's yeah. okay. And that's the other thing. Don't get in your head and be like, "Oh my God, I'm dry," or "I can't do this." Yeah. It's like, no. forget it. So you've inspired the sex challenge. Quickies in June. It's Masturbation Month in May. Get to know yourself. Power back up, and then go for it head in on June. Uh, give us a little getting them out of their head when they're in such a deep rut and routine. You know when you get in that headspace where you're like, "I just can't have sex because." Oh, we talk to a lot of women, yeah. especially in relationships, that are like, "I don't even know how to get back to that place." Well, and that goes back to what the doctor was telling us that we yeah. had on. Um, you have to just think about something that you really like, and what is it that you love about that partner that you're with? Mm -hmm. What is it that you loved about them? Mm -hmm. And they have needs too. Mm -hmm. Quit being so selfish. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. And if men, if you're holding out on your women, quit being so selfish. Everybody, quit, quit being, being selfish. So selfish. Quit being so shy about what you really want. Too. Well, and I think in our heads we're like, it's got to be this 20 minute thing. And if mm -hmm. I don't have an orgasm, they're not going to be happy. And if I don't do this, it's not going to be this. And if I just do it. Yeah. So I, and you, I have to put on the lingerie. And oh my god, I haven't had a bikini wax in a few weeks. And yeah. oh my god, no. You know, I, it's interesting when I when I unicorn get some stubble sex on. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, that, that was something that that came up with me is I was like, oh my god, I haven't had my wax. I just whatever. Right. And he was like, I'm 43 years old. Do you think? I fucking care if you have hair and I was like you don't I thought so yeah right but then again that's you in your head so you're talking about how to get you're asking me how to get out of your yes. head we yeah. do that right yeah we yeah. do that that's what we guys do guys don't care guys don't guys care guys don't care and ladies every, every guy we've had on what have they said about body hair they don't they, they don't, don't care yeah every guy we've had on we're like well what if she doesn't have shaved legs okay <laughs> in the morning I might notice and be like but when you're in the moment you don't and that's yeah. what you have to think quit being selfish and just go for it and when, we, th when we think about it when we're fucking a man we're in love with them are we like oh my god i'm getting a pubic hair in my tooth oh my god i'm no, doing this no yeah. we're just no. like i love this man i'm gonna suck his dick yeah uh, right I, i've talked with someone before and she's like you know i want my man to be more aggressive or i want him to do things like this and that but how do i tell him that after five years he's gonna think i've haven't been pleasing you this whole fucking time like it's hard for people to like introduce things i kind of want this and they don't know how to comfortably do it without insulting them make him feel like they haven't been doing it right it's like maybe you can bring it up like I saw porn and this I guy did this and I thought it was really hot and I want to try together. it. Well, and you know? I think guys, if you're listening yeah. too, just because a woman introduces a toy in the bedroom or <sighs> anything different, it has nothing to do with that. You're not pleasing us the right way or you're not doing it the mm -hmm. right way. It's about adding excitement. Well, and when you Thank think about you. it, when men try to introduce things to the Preach. bedroom, they're not embarrassed to be like, hey, can I choke you? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, And you, yeah. you're kind of like, oh, I guess. No, and I'm, I'm like, yes, trip. please. <laughs> What porn have you been seeing? That? But I think uh, these are all roadblocks. When people yeah. get stuck in a relationship, they're like, oh, well, we haven't really tried this, and how do I introduce The best thing about anything, and this goes back to public speaking in high mm -hmm. school, look at yourself in the mirror, picture the person that you're talking to, and mm -hmm. say it out loud. And it will help you tweak what it is the way you want to say it to that person. Talk to yourself in the mirror. Yeah. yeah. And you can always talk to us. I mean, write us in. Write us love, in. Talk to I Steph, love. man. Yeah. yeah. How do they, how do they find it. you? Just a quickie, like, Instagram you, slide in. Yeah. Oh, I'm Steph McKenzie 7 on Instagram. S or S-T-E. S-T-E-P-H, mm -hmm. and then M-A-C, because uh -huh. we're Scottish. Uh-huh. Mac. And Mackenzie, M-A-C-K-E-N-Z-I-E. -E. Okay. Yes. I love it. Yes. And then you can listen to her in the mornings, too. Oh, my God. On the coolest classic rock station. I mean, Aww, the point's always on. That's our afternoon, like, playing in the pool music and stuff. I'm oh, like, yeah, because I was on on Sunday, and you're like, we hear you, but we don't see you. Yeah. When you text me that yeah. one day, I was like, thank Why you. Why are we on on Sunday? It just makes I, me feel It's new. Warm. You know, it's the new world we live in. Ah, uh, yes. Radio. You must wear multiple. <laughs> You're doing it all. <laughs> all right, I'll kick it off. So, do you know your love language? I think I do, but I'm always willing to explore and always questioning, should I try this? Mm -hmm. Should I do something different? Mm -hmm. So, what do you think your love language is? It's Mine's like touch. Physical touch, words of affirmation, gifts. 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 I'm a gift. Quality Acts time. Service and, and quality excellent. term. Yeah, I'm a gift. gift. I'm a gift. Okay. Give a gift. Do you know what your partner's is? His is, he needs the affirmations. Words okay. of affirmation. Yeah. I like it. Yep. And so you speak to that because sometimes we try to, sometimes we'd be speaking to our own love language and they're like, I don't care about that. If I had a partner whose love language. I don't care language, about those new shorts. <laughs> if I had a partner whose love language was gifts, I think I could adhere to that. Fuck yeah, you could. Could yeah, you? you? Could. 
no, I'm, I'm actually a really good gift giver. I My love too. language is touch. If I had a partner whose love language was words of affirmation, I'd be like, you did great, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a dog all of a sudden. <laughs> you did need. so good. <laughs> you really know a lot about Star Wars. <laughs> That's where I'd get screwed up. And what's funny is I can hype up my girlfriends like nobody's business, but when it comes to guys, I'm like, figure so it that's, out. So that's uh, you guys asking on the rapid fire on that. Yeah. So yeah. love language, explore it, Google it, know it. Yeah. Because you are, I totally was like, where? what one is it? Because you don't it really think about that because yeah. you just know. Yeah. yeah. Mine's gifts, his yeah. is, is affirmation. Yeah, and sometimes you don't realize, but we do tend to show it in the way we want it. So it definitely goes a long way. So as right. a woman who just knows yourself now, was there anything you pretended to like when you first met your partner? <laughs> Were you like, yes, I love playing golf. <laughs> well, ping pong so no, fun. No, I do. I actually, I love golf. We've taken that up. That's new. But I tried to do what I did with previous partners. Yeah. And I thought I liked that. But it's what you like with the person that you're with. Ah. And it didn't work with the person that I'm with now. Ah. Oh, so okay. we have our own new fun things that we do. I like that. Interesting. That is Gosh, true. She's come full circle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does no, that make sense? Like, like I, I'm, I'm a big horror movie freak. None of my partners ever have been, but if I do meet somebody, I'm not going to be like, hide that part of myself, but right. also like, I'm not going to force a partner who doesn't want to. Right. And that's the thing that. is I think that we try and yeah. be the same. You can't be the same no. in relationships. No. And that's so confident. And I love that. Okay. We're going to do some of our silly ones. All right. Okay. If you could pick a new radio name, kind of like your stripper yes. name, it is a uh, color and a portion of your favorite band name and then deliver a liner. Hey, this is so and so. You're hanging with MJ and Brie on the Keeping a Casual podcast. So, color in a portion yes. of your favorite band. <laughs> okay. Uh, mine would be this is Silver and Black Poison, oh. and you're listening to the MJ and Brie show. Yes. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That's gonna be a line. We need, I mean, you should write, read that 10 times. Okay. Shout out to all of us. That's and what they Silver do And Black radio. is a full circle on the Raiders. Okay. Shout out to the Ooh, Raiders. Oh, yes, she boys. did. <laughs> what about you, Brie? This is. Black Bowie, and you are listening to MJ Ooh. and Brie. Oh, oh yes. all right, Black Bowie. Okay, I'm Love gonna go. With, Bowie. I'm gonna go with. Uh, this is Blue Zeppelin, Ooh. and we're here live with Steph McKenzie from Fox and McKenzie in the morning. Yes. Uh, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We kept it classic for you. Oh kept it classic for you. So even though you've been in long-term relationships now for a while, um, obviously dated before. Right. What's a petty reason you've, you've dumped somebody? <laughs> oh, my this. God. Um, One time I dumped a guy because he wanted to watch The Notebook with me. And you didn't want to watch The Notebook, or you didn't want him to watch it with you? I didn't want to watch The Notebook. Oh, yeah. I, like, had a clear I have a clear no Nicholas Sparks policy in my life yeah and, uh, I'm with you on that you, because I'm not a crier and I'm like why do I want to cry why do I sit down to watch a movie to make me cry like this is oh, no God. and I, I told him I was like I just don't like movies like that and he's like you're gonna watch the notebook with Ooh, me hell no it. I would have like, got it no. no no I'm not no I'm not and no. this isn't working for me mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. so I don't think it's petty but everyone makes fun of me <laughs> for it then it is <laughs> <laughs> I have broken up with men before because they weren't into sports like I was oh. and their team was in my division so what I are you wearing never, panties I, <laughs> right, I could never date a Bronco fan a Charger fan <laughs> or a Chiefs fan <gasps> oh did I throw out the Chiefs and the Broncos you did <laughs> I, I, I was like why. all right yeah so so who's, your, who's your baseball team worst. though by my ex-marriage, it was the Red Sox for so long, so that's my first baseball. Uh -huh. But my boyfriend's cousin is the first base coach for the Padres. Oh, so hey. Don't tell him I said that. So, Padres! Hey, San Diego! <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Bree's a big Dodgers fan. So, oh, yeah. yeah. And me, I just don't. She's like, sports <laughs> ball? Like, I'm not into sports. I am a big, sports. I'm a, I'm, I'm from L.A. I'm all L.A. teams. Lakers, Rams. King. Nights. Oh, okay. Dude, Ooh. I do love the heat. I did see a heat game in Miami. A couple of them. Lakers, yeah, but I'm Lakers, I'm Rams, I'm Dodgers. Um, I was a Kings fan growing up, obviously. Yeah. And Kings are still cool to me, but when the Knights came here... Vegas is my home. I'm not converting to be a Raiders fan, but Vegas is my home. And 
when the the knights came here they came at a time when we needed them as a city yes and they did so good that first season and i was like i like hockey yeah i've never been a switcher but uh i've never been that switch but i'm gonna be that gonna switcher. Say, you <laughs> kind of have been a switcher oh here we go because you're in radio what is your current song burnout you're like if i have to hear this song again oh um <laughs> it's starting to be a little fleetwood mac because of the that whole tiktok phenomenon i'm that sorry happened. but people need to leave stevie nicks alone she was mine <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh oh. She was mine, and then all you fucking little Gen Zers are coming after her and making her cool again. <laughs> well, I love Stevie Nicks because you know her yeah. name is Stephanie. Yes. Uh-huh. And my nickname growing up was Stevie because I was, I'm half Canadian, half oh. American. Well, my sister and I were yeah. the only Americans born in our family. Oh, that's awesome. And so my mom's best friend's name was Stevie. It's English. It's my nickname. Okay. So here we go again. Oh. Which one is it? Uh, all of them. <laughs> right now. Seriously. You know, little- but it, it goes in circles, right? It does. Sometimes it can be Led Zeppelin. Sometimes Pink yeah. Floyd's getting a little old for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love them. I love classic uh-huh. rock, but but when also you're in radio, that heavy rotation will get well, to you sometimes. You're, when you're, you're like, Nietzsche in classic rock. There's only so much classic rock you can do. Oh, it's not yeah. like Led Zeppelin's putting out new albums. Dude, it's evolved, right? So yes. it used to be the oldies. Yeah, mm. and then it was classic hits, and now, now it's, it's classic it's rock. Smashing pumpkins. <laughs> Kings because of Leon was on there. I was like, what? Yeah. That Metallica. <laughs> yeah. So so I hope and I pray and thank you for everyone that listens that it can happen and I can ebb and flow as it grows as well because Fleetwood mm-hmm. Mac will become an oldie soon and Metallica will be the new classic rock. Yeah. And Smashing Pumpkins will be the new classic oh, rock. Oh, on the radio station, I was telling Brie. I know, Bri, I, said, I know. I'll never forget when the kid calls. He's like, so do you guys play like classic alternative? And I'm like, well, What's what that? do you consider a classic alternative? And he's like, you know, like the Smashing Pumpkins and Linkin Park. I was like, oh, I no. know. How right? old are you? You should be in school. <laughs> I, 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 you know, <laughs> why are you calling is me? Where's your we're mother? T- <laughs> she and I were texting earlier, and I was like, okay, classic rock. And she's like, give me some f- your favorite classic rock artists. And I was like, is Tom Petty considered classic rock yet, or is yes. he still just mine? He's still running. <laughs> down. I love how you, everything's yours. That is so cute. Tom Petty and I share the same birthday. Running oh. down a dream. Oh, I don't know that Tom he can Petty. get old. I think people that have passed, like. Janis Joplin can't get old for me. Yeah. Yeah, just the classics. So what is a song you belt in karaoke? (laughs) Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. Lady in Red. (laughs) This is my song. I'm going to sing Celine Dion. I went to a party last Saturday night. I I didn't didn't get get laid. I I got got in a fight. Uh Uh-huh. It ain't ain't no big thing. thing. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, Lena Ford. I love her. She was so much better without the Runaways. Sorry. Yeah, I agree. (laughs) I totally agree. Love her. Uh, That's my thing. Joan Jett was much better without the Runaways. Cherie Curry, sorry you needed them. <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. I'm with you. 100%. I agree. What was a fond celebrity encounter where you kind of fangirled and you were like, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> like you kind of were just like, I got tripped up or just a little You know what? I do nervous. that all the time. I think that's yeah. what makes me me. Yeah. I, I love that you admit that because uh, most radio people are like, I don't get starstruck. And no, I'm like, you should have seen me meeting Muse. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do. I'm giddy all the time. Yeah. All the time. I'm so giddy. I I used to work for Rob, the late, great Robin Leach. Oh, I used, Robin Leach. I know. And love him or hate him, it is what it is. But I did his makeup before. He's awesome. Yeah. He was. He taught me a lot. He was very. Mm-hmm. He was an a-hole, but he taught me a lot. Mm-hmm. But I got to meet Snoop Dogg. And it was, we had to wait for so long. It Deal, was double the longest jism. interview. <laughs> and we had to do it after the show. We were supposed to do it before the show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we you go wait into, he got high. Yeah. He's ready. Uh, <laughs> but it's like 2.30 in the morning and I'm like, I just want to go home. Obviously, this is before children. Yeah. And we go in and I had all this bling on in my outfit and he wanted all my bling. <laughs> he took all my, and I, it's Snoop Dogg. How do you say no? You're, I gave him all my rings and my jewelry. Just to take a picture in? No, he took it. My God, you got robbed he, by Snoop Dogg. He can afford it too. <laughs> Did you know that Snoop Dogg's blunt roller makes $50,000 a year? Are you kidding me? I wish I was. When I found that out, I was like, I need to get in the blunt rolling business. No doubt. I do too. Uh, Uh, Snoop Dogg and I also share the same birthday, just for the record. It's me, Snoop Dogg, and Tom Petty, and Bella Lugosi. Well, now Snoop Dogg's walking around with a Steph nameplate. (laughs) (laughs) What's going on? 
But I did, I was able to make out with Brett Michaels once. That was Ooh. fun. Please tell me. That was so, well. Did he break out the guitar and sing every <laughs> rose? <laughs> every rose has it. No, but that is one of my He's dreams so that I want to sing on stage with him. Uh. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it, it sounds so weird. But like I have their numbers and you know what I oh, mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So but, uh, you were fun. a groupie. Fun. Yes, I yeah, am. I kind of am, I guess. <laughs> okay, it's okay. She's, she's loved her radio. You're career, in good so. company. Yes. Oh, okay. I think uh, maybe let's hit two more and then we will wrap. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is so fun. I don't want to let you go. <laughs> oh, I. God. When you feel burnt out, what do you do to bring yourself back into a healthy mind space? I work out a lot. Ooh, yeah. love it. Same. I love working out. I'm a gym rat. That's yeah. where we would see each other all the time. Yes. She'd be on the lip. She'd be like, what's up, girl? I was like, God damn it. She is fucking fit. <laughs> 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 Not anymore. No, no, but I will amazing. be. It, it, I got COVID curves. It comes in. <laughs> goes right sometimes you have to really just hone in on it yeah. i'm i'm i've been the last month i've really been like she has been my honing schedule in. Yes, the, and i sucked it into these pants last night and fucking i was like goals oh i, I was i was going hard until i fell in the shower and couldn't work out anymore <laughs> oh my god what happened <laughs> She fell in the shower. I fell in the shower. <laughs> How did you fall I, in the shower? Were you masturbating? I wish, I wish, I wish it was a cool <laughs> story. <laughs> my shower. Okay, I have short legs and my shower is really tall and I slipped as I was coming out of it. It's just not a cool story. I wish I could say I was drunk. <laughs> I wish there was something more I could say other than I'm clumsy. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, she's like, I can't work. We was like two weeks out from like a photo shoot. Yeah, I was and, like, like, I, I can't company. work out. <laughs> oh, the oh, worst. Man. I'm, I'm with you on that. Like when I'm stressed, I'm like, I need to work out and take some power back and some control in my life because that's what it is for me. It's like I'm in control. You're right. Yes. I am taking this power. I'm taking this space where I can be completely present and get my fucking workout on now that's why I'm so less stressed that's why I've been like freaking out trying to dye my hair red I feel like I have no control yeah, right that's now right, that's it you little control okay Steph before we let you go one thing that we admire I feel like I have found one of my greatest work partners in all with Brie oh yes like I and I've worked on morning shows I've had a couple of partners I've been first chair where I had to boss around boys mm-hmm. they did not like it and it was just always really struggle for me to like have a partner on the radio but Brie and I do so well you have survived two decades with Chris Fox. He is the best. Like he I'm in Cabo. Amazing. He's like I'm in Cabo. Like um, but no, he's just always been very genuine and sweet. A very good supporter too. You know, how do you guys that magical teamwork? What is something you learned about maintaining a successful work partnership? We decided to let the walls come down, and there is nothing that we hold back. That's amazing. And we fight on the air. Oh, we call each other out on the air. Mm. Whether we're happy, sad, and we've we laugh because we've been together. He's had two marriages. I've had my issues, and now three years strong with my mm-hmm. amazing guy. Uh-huh. And he actually introduced us. Oh, I See? love that. Yeah, he introduced us. So He's... there's nothing that's a secret between us. Mm-hmm. And whether he likes it or doesn't like it, we can call each other out on it, right? So what you're telling me is when you are in any kind of relationship, communication is key? I know, right? She's right. Keepers, what have we been telling you for the past three years? <laughs> I know. I think that's really it. Like, we tell yeah. each other everything, whether we... He's very real. He's a straight shooter. Yeah. Where I'm like, well, I think we should talk about this because the way you you know mm-hmm. i'm a little bit more like yeah. that where he's like no that sucked yeah <laughs> yeah like, we both oh. have those no that sucked moments <laughs> yeah or- we can we, we switch a lot and like you know she'll be like i need to talk to you about something that's been bothering me and i'm like over here i didn't realize and then she tells me but i always i always make sure to like really hear her and yeah. it, and, and i'm i really want to understand them because i'm like I don't want to make you ever feel disrespected or yeah. misunderstood. Like I'm always going to be like, I'm here to listen to you yeah. and I'm never going to shut you down. If you have a problem, we're very good at constructive criticism with each other. And yeah. you guys and hang out outside the podcast. I think yeah. that that's a big thing. I think that yeah. we hear about all these broadcasters or people that are just, it's a job for them. Right? Yeah. That's, They're making it happen. Well, that's something that we ask everybody who's like in a partnership similar to ours. We're like, well, how do you maintain the friendship? And it's not because we're having yeah. issues doing it. No. I mean, we're not, no, but it's, it's just, I think it's, it, a lot of people would love to just have somebody they can just go on these. Uh, you have your person that you love, but then there's the creative partners. We yeah. create this really incredible stuff, business, whatever. Yeah, and then but like the good thing about us is we uh, we respect each other's boundaries too. Because if I'm like, girl, I like she's like, we got to do this and this and this and that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, but girl, I'm going out tonight. Yeah. Like I'm I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm, yeah, I, you're right. Yeah, you have you. to respect boundaries. Yeah, and I think when you talk things through, I guess when you're with someone that you just 
it, it's a re- personal yeah. relationship too. We've come so far. Mm-hmm. It's we, it's a marriage without the marriage. It really is. And we laugh. We laugh all the time. People think we're married when we go out. When yeah. we do personal appearances yeah. and stuff. Hell no, he's a like Bronco s- fan. Yeah, of <laughs> course. Of course. No, and you guys are just, I mean, you guys are both just hot, you know? Yeah. Like, you guys are like a sexy radio you, power duo. You know in you. Vegas and you're rockers. Funny, so. I mean, I've been Love listening it. to you guys since I was, we don't need to talk about yes, that. Yes, thank you. <laughs> God. Um, I thought you were married on the air for a long time because I mean, I when I came up when I first started in radio, our morning co-hosts were yeah. married, and so I just kind of assumed <laughs> that we were married. That you we, guys were them. Like we we get that a lot though. We get yeah. that a ton because when you see us out in public, people are like, "You guys are the same as you are on air," and yeah. I'm like, "But that's who we are." In this industry, it's a lot of business. Okay, we're we're on the air together, but it's business, and that's it. And once yeah. we're off the air, we're not friends. And we've seen it in a lot of. And I don't think that's sustainable. I don't either. In this industry. I do not think it is. I think that like if you're a doctor and a nurse and you have to have surgery, mm-hmm. that's a business relationship. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think a lot of things are business relationships, but not in radio. In the meantime, Steph, please drop please drop the wink link drop the winks to your website <laughs> yes. and uh, where they can find you on socials again. And well, we'll of course you can always do point nine seven dot com, mm-hmm. find Fox and McKenzie and what's coming up. And I'm on Instagram at Steph McKenzie seven and I'm on Facebook at Steph McKenzie and it's M A C K E N Z I E. And I love when people reach out and say, hi don't try and call me because i will never take a call on Mm -hmm. facebook sorry love you guys but i just won't do that don't do the facebook calls what do you interact with more are you like a twitter facebook instagram what's i try and do everything Uh, good for you i do i but that's just because of bounce back and forth like are we doing a remote do i have kids Mm -hmm. things and i'm so into sports i do raider nation radio with jt i got to give him Mm -hmm. a big shout out very cool yeah that's another partner that he and i are becoming strong too and it's pretty amazing with what the las vegas raiders are doing here a little bit about raider nation Nation Radio, where can they find that? All the links are on the Facebook page, but yeah. Raider Nation Radio um, is on Twitter if you just go at RNR. Uh-huh. It's really cool there. Very cool. And I'm doing a lot of community work with the Raiders, and they're doing stuff for the inner city kids here. Yeah. A lot of cool stuff with them. <sighs> all right. And Keepers, if you want to listen to her in the morning ever, you can just go to 971thepoint.com and yeah. listen live. You yeah. can stream her online like tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So Hello. She'll all be up our early. out of Vegas. What time you wake up in the morning? <laughs> early. <laughs> like 3 a.m.? It depends. So, like, last night I had a bottle of wine. It was the last day of second grade, and it was just an emotional day. Oh, it's graduation week. It was. And my son lost his flag football game, and Aww. some of the kids were crying, and it was really a tough one. We were mm-hmm. in the championships. Oh, wow. So it was tough, but uh, I decided a bottle of wine. So it was a tough morning getting up, <laughs> <laughs> but I did it for. Oh <laughs> my <laughs> god! It can be done. She does it all. I do it. She does it all. <laughs> she has gone through it all. She does it all, and we're just thank you for bringing all this energy and just love and to the table. And telling us to have all the quickies. Yes, I'm you guys. Ready. And you know what? The glass is always half full. Feel challenged. And I, I just <laughs> I love you guys, and oh, I love people, love and I love Las Vegas, and I love everyone listening everywhere that you're listening, and. Oh. Uh, just keep it going. You we just, love you. What's up, England? Global, girl. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> All right, guys. Until next time. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl, that was so fun. Yes, you guys rock. Catch us every Wednesday. And for our monthly specialty podcast, please join our Patreon. You'll get that the last Saturday of every month. And if you rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, you can be entered into our super sexy monthly giveaway. And if you want to share your voice on the show, you'll find everything you need to know at keepingitcasualpodcast.com.